Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your message that you have for us today, Lord. May we receive it with open hearts and minds. And Lord, may the words I speak be your words and not mine, that you have prepared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This message will be recorded in two videos which should flow straight on from each other. Last week, we saw that the Bible is very clear about the second coming of Jesus, especially that Jesus was very clear about it, about what is happening, the fact it's happening, and how it will happen. So what does that actually mean for you and I? What do we do with this information? Because if it's in the Bible, and Jesus told us himself, then it has to be pretty important for us, doesn't it? What is the meaning and what should be our attitude to the second coming of Jesus Christ? Well, firstly, the meaning of the second coming of Jesus is set forth clearly in the Bible. The second coming of Jesus Christ will be a time of revelation. In 1 Timothy 6, verses 13 to 15, Paul wrote to his mentor, In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Peter recorded in his own letter in 1 Peter 4 verse 13, But rejoice! Inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. See, God's been revealing himself to us since the dawn of time and humanity. He revealed himself to Adam and Eve personally in the Garden of Eden before the fall. He revealed himself in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Physically, when Jesus came to earth and he it was personal because he led people to healing he forgave them he's used his word to reveal himself to us now and will do so again when he comes again just as has been prophesied and so the second coming of Jesus will also then be a time of reigning Christ will rule that rule means that he will be who we look to, not our world's political leaders. It means there won't be room for sin. It means that he in his rightful place, ruling over all creation, will judge. It means we won't be disagreeing with those in power because only Jesus will be in that position of majesty and power. Scripture shows us what to expect. In Matthew 25, 13, Jesus, sorry, 25, 31, Jesus himself said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. In 2 Timothy 2, 12, Paul said, If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. Revelation 5, verse 10 says, You have made them to be a kingdom of and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth and then lastly in Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 John said I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God they had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The second coming of Jesus will also be a time of resurrection. And this should come as no surprise to us. You know, we celebrate our new life in baptism. We are resurrected to our new life in Christ. And scripture tells us we will be resurrected with him. We looked at some of these verses last week. In John chapter 5, verse 28 to 29, Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out, 
Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Listen, he said in verse 51, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Wow. That's a really deep sort of scripture to read. But we will be clothed. Perishable given up for imperishable. Mortality given up for immortality. Paul again wrote this time to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 beginning at verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Wow. And then the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And so the second coming of Jesus will involve resurrection. It will also be a time for Jesus to receive his people. In Matthew 24, 31, it's recorded that Jesus said, and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. And again in John 14, the first three verses record Jesus again. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. And lastly, in 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul's words are recorded, beginning at verse 14. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And we, the dead in Christ, will rise first. Sorry, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Now we've read that scripture twice because it's really important that we know it. It's really important that we know that the trumpet call is what we're listening for. That voice of the archangel to be called up to the clouds with those who have gone before us. We talked last week about coming face to face with Jesus personally. And that's what will happen. He's not sounding the trumpet and giving us the GPS coordinates on a, or a map. In John chapter 4, after the scripture we just looked at, Thomas said he didn't know the way to the Father. And Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was telling Thomas, along with the other disciples, that he's coming back to get us. I remember as a child at our local shopping centre, in more innocent times, I might add, that my mum sat me down at the front of the bank 
with a drink and a cake and said, stay here. I'll be inside the bank, but I'll be back to get you. I knew she was coming back to get me, to take me to the car. That may be a simplistic example, but that's what Jesus was saying. He will receive us and take us back with him. But the second coming of Jesus Christ will also be a time of rejection. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus told us that he will receive those who are truly his and reject those who aren't. As we're told in Matthew 25, verses 41 and 44. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. They will also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and didn't help you? But they know. It also will be a time of rejection as well as reception. Lastly, the second coming of Jesus Christ will be a time of reward. And again, we turn to Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This leads us to our second and last major point. When we know what the second coming of Jesus means for us, God's revelation, Jesus' reign, our resurrection, etc., we also then see that the Bible declares what our attitude should be toward the second coming of Jesus Christ. 